previous lecture we discussed about out breeding devices and in the next lecture we discussed about pollen pistil interactions now in today's session we will discuss about double fertilization so our next topic in ncrt it is 2.3 what is it children it is double fertilization now all of us know that the product of fertilization is zygote all of us know that male gamete will come and fuse with the female gamete it results in formation of a diploid zygote but then what is this two fertilization double fertilization let us see now we are talking about sexual reproduction in flowering plants flowering plants means they are angiosperms and you know double fertilization is a characteristic feature it is a unique feature of angiosperms and now let us try to understand what is double fertilization now when we say that pollination happened now what do you mean by pollination pollen grain came and landed on the stigma this is pollen grain came and landed on the stigma chemical dialogue started pollen grain uh, started interacting with the pistil pistil has identified it it is a compatible pollen only so pistil has given permission to it to make a pollen tube the pistil started germinating the pistil started uh, the pollen grain started germinating it made a pollen tube here we go this is a pollen tube this is the ovary ovary contains ovule what is this children this is ovary and what is this this is style and here is a landing platform called stigma and what is this called this is called pollen grain the male gametophyte and inside the ovary what do we find here is the embryo sac we will make a bigger embryo sac ok the smallest cells of the embryo sac are antipodals ok and here it has two lateral synergids so the synergids have finger like projections called filiform apparatus and in between the synergids is the egg cell this is the egg cell and these two are the polar nuclei now this is the nucleus of the egg this is the nucleus of the egg and this is the synergids okay so this embryo sac is enclosed within the ovule this is new cellus okay and this is the inner integument this is one integument and this is the other integument this is the other integument what did i draw children here i draw ovule I draw ovule. Inside ovule, I try to show an embryo sac. In embryo sac, what are these three cells called? Antipodals. And what are these two nuclei called? Polar nuclei. And what is this called? The female gamete, egg or oosphere. And what are these two lateral structures called? Synergids. The two lateral structures are called synergids. Okay. Now, what happens? The pollen tube is sending the male gametes. The pollen tube is sending the male gametes. The male gametes are entering like this. The male gametes are entering like this. How many male gametes will be there inside the pollen tube? Two male gametes. So, one pollen grain contains two male gametes. It contains two male gametes. And in angiosperms, both the male gametes are functional. In angiosperms, in angiosperms, both the male gametes are functional. Both the male gametes are, means they have the roles, this functional. Now, see, you can see here two male gametes are coming. So, one male gamete, this is the black colored one, one male gamete, fuses with the female gamete egg. 
So, fusion of male and female gamete is called syngamy. So, what happens first is syngamy. Children, what is syngamy? Syngamy is the fusion of one male gamete with the female gamete. It is the fusion of one male gamete with the egg. Egg is female gamete or it is also called oosphere. So, fusion of one male gamete with the female gamete is called syngamy. Syngamy leads to formation of zygote. Zygote is deployed. Zygote is deployed. Now, syngamy leads to formation of zygote and that is why this syngamy is also called generative fertilization. Syngamy is also called generative fertilization. Syngamy is also called generative fertilization and this process was demonstrated by Strasburger. So, this process was demonstrated by a scientist called Strasburger. It was demonstrated by Strasburger. So, syngamy happened, one male gamete fused with the female gamete, zygote is formed, right? That is here at the micropylar end. Now, that is one fertilization, generative fertilization. What happens to the second male gamete? Now, this second male gamete will also come inside. Before the second male gamete comes, the two polar nuclei, which are N and N, they fuse to make secondary nuclei. So, two polar nuclei, two polar nuclei, they are fusing, right? Two polar nuclei fuse to form secondary nuclei. Two polar nuclei are fusing to form secondary nuclei. N and then fusion 2N. So, secondary nuclei is 2N. Now, to this secondary nuclei, the second male gamete will come and fuse. The second male gamete, the second male gamete fuses with secondary nuclei. The second male gamete comes and fuses with the secondary nuclei. 2N fusing with another N. It will get a triploid structure. It will become 3N. It is 3N means triploid. What is it called? It becomes primary endospermic nucleus. It becomes primary endospermic nucleus. This primary endospermic nucleus, where is it formed? Inside the large central cell. Since three nuclei are involved here, one, two, the third one is a male gamete. Since three nuclei are involved here, we call it as triple fusion. What is this called as? This process is called as, I need to write here, it is called as triple fusion. Three nuclei are fusing, two polar nuclei with the male gamete. Okay, it is called triple fusion. It is also called vegetative fertilization. This is called generative. No, so triple fusion is also called vegetative fertilization. Triple fusion is also called vegetative fertilization. And vegetative fertilization was demonstrated by Navasin. This vegetative fertilization was demonstrated by, it is demonstrated by Navasin. Okay, children. So, I showed you two fertilizations. First fertilization is generative fertilization, which led to the formation of zygote. Second fertilization is vegetative fertilization, which led to the formation of triploid pen, triploid primary endospermic nucleus. So, then two fertilizations are there. That is why it is called double fertilization. Now, let us talk what is double fertilization. That is our today's topic. What is double fertilization? Occurrence of syngamy and triple fusion. First fertilization, second fertilization. Simultaneously inside the embryo sac is double fertilization. So, what is double fertilization? Occurrence of syngamy and Occurrence of syngamy and triple fusion simultaneously. Occurrence of 
syngamy and triple fusion simultaneously in the embryo sac is called double fertilization who discovered double fertilization the same person double fertilization was discovered by the same person i am writing navasin double fertilization was discovered by navasin in a plant called fritillaria and lilium lily double fertilization was discovered by a scientist called navasin in a plant called fritillaria and lilium and this double fertilization is a characteristic feature of angiosperms double fertilization is unique feature of angiosperms right double fertilization is a unique feature of angiosperms but there are some families like orchidaceae and podostaminaceae which are angiosperms only but double fertilization is not there so we can write down here but in some families but in some families like what are those families one is orchidaceae orchids ornamental plants and the second one is podo stominaceae in orchidaceae and podostaminaceae double fertilization is absent but in some families like orchidaceae and podostaminaceae double fertilization is absent children did you understand now what is double fertilization syngamy means fusion of male gamete with the female gamete when the gametes fuse zygote is formed that is called first fertilization which is also called generative fertilization which was demonstrated by strasburger next one is the two polar nuclei fuse to make secondary nuclei which is 2n diploid to this secondary nuclei the second male gamete will come and fuse then it will make a 3n structure triploid structure which is called primary endospermic nucleus pen stands for primary endospermic nucleus okay so then three nuclei are fusing triple fusion and it is making an endosperm which is a nutritive tissue so it's called vegetative fertilization demonstrated by navasin two fertilizations inside the same place embryo sac together is called double fertilization demonstrated by navasin in plants like fritillaria and lilium double fertilization is characteristic feature of angiosperms but it is absent in some families like orchidaceae and podostaminaceae take a screenshot we will continue right now when the pollen tube enters into the style what happens we'll discuss now so we are talking about pollen grain entered to the style okay this is pollen tube it has ent it's passing through the style how does the pollen tube knows that here is the embryo sac how does the pollen tube knows that here is the embryo sac and here is the micropylar end and at the micropylar end only egg is there how does it know okay so what happens means see what did i draw here antipodals okay and the two polar nuclei present in the large central cell now when the pollen tube enters through the style so if we want to draw the complete picture again we'll draw 
this is the style. Ovary. So, you know, when the pollen tube is passing through the style, first the synergid will degenerate. Amma. I draw it here. First the synergid degenerates. So, what happens? Step by step we will see. The first synergid degenerates. When does the first synergid degenerates? When the pollen tube enters into the style. It degenerates when pollen tube enters the style. Children, when it got degenerated, it starts secreting chemicals. It starts secreting chemicals and pollen grain and pollen tube can sense these chemicals. Pollen tube can sense these chemicals. Pollen tube is moving towards this chemical now. That is how it comes to know that the egg is here. So, one synergy degenerates when the pollen tube enters the style to direct the pollen tube towards this side. Okay. Now, next what happens? So, there, uh, a chemo tactic movement. Chemotactic movement of pollen tube towards the micropyle. The next step is the pollen tube is getting attracted towards the chemical and it is moving towards the micropyle. It is moving towards the micropyle. Then Filiform apparatus which are present in the second synergid will direct the pollen tube. So, these are the filiform apparatus. Step 3, the filiform apparatus guide the pollen tube to reach the egg. They guide the pollen tube to reach the egg. So, when the pollen tube enters the filiform apparatus, when the pollen tube enters the filiform apparatus, then the second synergid also will degenerate. What happened? When the pollen tube entered here, the second synergid also degenerated. It guides to reach the egg. Then the second synergid degenerates. The second synergid degenerates. When the second synergy degenerates, then this pollen tube, it got degenerated. Then the pollen tube will release the male gametes. Two male gametes, no? Then the pollen tube releases the male gametes into the cytoplasm of the synergy. So, when the second synergy degenerates, the next point what we can tell is, the next point what we can tell is, the male gametes, are discharged into the cytoplasm of the synergid. The male gametes are released. The male gametes are released into the cytoplasm of the second synergid. Okay. The male gamete will be released into the cytoplasm of the second synergid. Then the first male gamete fuses with the female gamete. Then the sixth step, male gamete fuses with the female gamete. The process syngamy. What is the process called? Syngamy leads to formation of zygote will happen. Then followed by the two polar nuclei, meanwhile they will fuse. The two polar nuclei, meanwhile they will fuse. To make a secondary nuclei. What is this? This is 2N secondary nuclei. To this secondary nuclei, the second male gamete will come and fuse. The second male gamete fuses with the diploid. It comes and fuses with the diploid secondary nucleus. Children, this is the diploid secondary nucleus. The second male gamete comes and fuses with the diploid secondary nucleus to form triploid primary endosperm. 
nucleus. In simple abbreviated form, we can call pen. This male gamete comes and fuses with this two male with these two polar nuclei, and it forms one, two, three. What is this? This is pen primary endospermic nucleus, which is three n, which is triploid. Where is it formed? In this large central cell. Now, after the pen forms, the large central cell changes into, after the pen is formed, this large central cell changes into an endosperm cell. It changes into endosperm cell. What is endosperm cell? Which is a nutritive. This endosperm cell, now it will divide. So, it will develop a nutritive tissue. This endosperm cell will develop a nutritive tissue. So, this is what is called double fertilization. This is how the male gametes will identify the female gamete. So, zygote is formed here, pen is formed here, then the large cell converts into endosperm cell. So, this is about double fertilization. Take a screenshot, then we will talk about post fertilization structures and events. Right. So, now we have to talk about post fertilization structures and events. Fertilization completed, double fertilization happened. Now, it is post fertilization. post fertilization what structures will be formed and what events will occur what structures will be formed what events will occur so we can tell that soon after fertilization the flower will fade the flower will start drying up soon after fertilization the flower fades then the petals, the attractive structures, stamens also, style also degenerates, no role. Why didn't I write about the uh, sepals? Why didn't I write about the sepals? Usually sepals also will degenerate, but sometimes the sepals can persist. Then we call them as persistent calyx. So, sepals sometimes they are there, sometimes they are persistent, they are there. Now, then that is called as persistent calyx. Calyx, the horal is there. Now, we will divide the persistent calyx into marcescent calyx. and acrescent calyx. So, we will divide into marcescent calyx and acrescent calyx. What is marcescent calyx? We will take the example then we will understand it. The examples are brinjal and tomato. Physalis is an example here. Now, in brinjal, if you are holding a brinjal, What is this? Is this the calyx? Very strong and stout in chili also. Means along with the fruit, the calyx grows. If the calyx grows, that condition is called marcescent calyx. If the calyx just stays but not grows, that is acrescent calyx. Now, sepals or calyx, they will fall off, sometimes they will be there. Petals, stamen, style will degenerate, okay, they will degenerate. And what will happen to the ovary? Fertilized ovary is called fruit, right? What is fertilized ovary called? Fertilized ovary is called fruit. Now, children, then what happens to the ovary wall? 
ovary wall will become fruit wall then fruit wall is named as pericarp then fertilization after fertilization ovary becomes fruit ovary wall become fruit wall then inside the ovary lies the ovule fertilized ovule is called a seed so ovule if it gets fertilized the fertilized ovule is called as seed and the ovule has an outer integument outer covering the outer integument will become the outer coat of seed which is called testa outer integument becomes the outer coat of the seed what is it called testa now the ovule also has an inner integument inner integument becomes the inner seed coat the inner seed coat is called tegmen the inner seed coat is called tegmen after fertilization ovary turns into fruit ovule turns into seed outer wall will become testa inner wall will become tegma that four micropyle will tell right micropyle on the ovule will be there as that four on the seed also so micro pile micro pile will remain as micro pile only micro pile will remain as micro pile only whereas the hilum the part where the funicle is attached to the body the hilum of the ovule remains as a scar on the seed the hilum remains as a scar on the seed when we fell down when a scar remains there so in the same manner hilum remains as a scar on the seed and what happens to those antipodals and synergids they will also degenerate so can i write here what happens to antipodals and synergids after fertilization they will also degenerate antipodal sand synergies also degenerate what happens to the egg children main event zygote what happens to the polar nuclei what happens to the polar nuclei they formed pen what happened to the large central cell children last central cell became endosperm cell or tissue the last central cell became endosperm or uh, endosperm tissue now the ovule has new cells what happens to the new cells the nutritive tissue new cells will be consumed off new cells will be consumed off it will not be there but in some seeds the new cells will be there then that is called as persistent new cells so take a screenshot we will continue right can i erase this then so new cells which is a nutritive tissue so will be consumed off if the new cells is there in the seed then persistent new cells persistent new cells is called perisperm what is it called perisperm many a times they will ask you the ploidy of perisperm ploidy of perisperm is 2n ploidy of endosperm amma 3n ploidy of endosperm is 3n ploidy of perisperm is 2n because this came from the new cells that came by triple fusion so examples of the seeds where perisperm is there piper beetle then beetroot and nymphaeaceae family lotus so in nymphaeaceae beetroot and piperaceae piper beetle perisperm will be there usually if it is there also how much perisperm will be there scanty uh, less perisperm will be there less 
perisperm will be there and more endosperm will be there. Endosperm is the future nutritive tissue, no? So, more endosperm and less perisperm is a normal condition. It is the normal condition. But the speciality of Piper, but the speciality of Piper beetle is it has the opposite. Bulky perisperm and less endosperm. Piper beetle has bulky perisperm and less endosperm it has. So, this is the speciality. So, children what is perisperm? It is a remnant of the new cellulose. What is perisperm? Perisperm is the remnant sometimes like this also with this terminology also they can ask you what is perisperm? It is a remnant of new cellulose. It is a remnant of new cellulose. So, this is about today's session what we discussed is double fertilization and post fertilization events we discussed. Now, in the next session we will discuss how the endosperm will be formed, how the endosperm tissue will be formed and how the zygote develops into embryo. So, in post fertilization the main events are endosperm development, the main events under post fertilization are endosperm development and embryo development that we will discuss in